Hi, Python interpreter. I'm going to simulate the complete workflow of Python interpreter. How a Python source code is getting converted into the executional code. So you have a certain workflow in between them and we are going to work around in such a way that we get the step-by-step -step executional workflow of this complete process that happens internally to the interpreter. So what is interpreter? That we have to understand first. So to understand the interpreter, let's go with a simulated environment where you will get to know the diagrammatic flow of this complete interpreting process. So here you can see that there is an availability of source code and uh, the source code extension is .py. Now what source code is this going to be? Obviously it's a Python source code. And the file name that I've kept here is abc followed with the extension of .py. The py stands for the Python source code extension and this source code of Python is going to be interpreted by the interpreting environment. So I have brought a Python interpreter environment here where in this Python interpreter environment you have multiple components where each component will perform its task in order to successfully generate the executional code of that source code that's been written in Python. So let's hand over the source code into the Python interpreter. So how do we trigger the Python interpreter? To trigger the Python interpreter, we use a command called Python followed with a space and then you have to offer your source code. That's nothing but your abc.py. By this way, we trigger the Python interpreter. Post triggering the Python interpreter environment, as you can see, there's a, a complete black box where the Python interpreter process is going to happen. So once we hand over the source code into the Python interpreter, the very first step that happens inside the Python interpretation is lexing. Now to define lexing, we will go to the next slide. But prior to that, let's complete the workflow process and see how the executional code is getting generated. So once you offer the Python file into your Python interpreter, the very first stage is all about the lexing stage. And this lexing stage will do its process with the given abc.py. Manually, what the lexing does is it creates a token in it the, for the given code. For the given Python code, the lexing will create a token and the token is going to be handed over to a parser where the parsing takes place and once the parsing of that particular token is done, it will be handed over to a process called compiling. That's the third stage. This compiling is very important. So the first stage is all about lexing, which generates a token and the generated token will be parsed by the parser where you have a component called parsing there. And then the parsed code will be handed over to the compiler where typically a compiler which is sitting inside the interpreter. That's something weird here because generally a compilation happens prior your code goes into the interpreter. Compiler sits outside the interpretation. So you have a compiling stage and then you go for the interpreting stage and then you go for the executional stage. But how about in Python is your file will be directly deployed into your interpretation environment and it has to adhere these stages of lexing, parsing and compilation. Post compiling the parsed code, it will generate another file format called bytecode. This bytecode is actually called as intermediate language code, ILC, intermediate language code. And the extension of this bytecode file is .pyc, Python class file. We call it as a class file here, technically, but it is known as a bytecode. Similar principle is what happens in Java as well. But what we do in Java is 
your Java source code will be compiled by the compiler prior the compiled code is given to the interpreter. So compiler sits outside the environment of an interpreter there in Java, but in Python, the compilation process is going to happen internally into the interpreter itself. That's ideally at the runtime. So that's why you are eligible to quickly hand over your file into the interpreter and the interpreter starts executing it. Now there is one drawback behind this compilation which happens inside the interpretation. Obviously, this leads to a performance lag. The reason is you have to perform a compilation at the runtime. So that time taken by the compilation is actually going to contribute to the performance drawback. So once after we generate a bytecode, which is in the extension of .pyc, and we call that code as an intermediate language code, and this intermediate language code will be further handed over to a virtual machine, which is actually the interpreting stage. This virtual machine is very closer to your operating system, which simulates like your operating system. That's why we call it as a virtual machine there who's going to do the actual job of an interpreting your byte code to another process called machine code. Because ultimately the machine is going to operate on top of a machine code. So once the interpreting interpretation is done with the help of the given PYC file, which is a bytecode file, you obviously end up by generating a code called a runtime code, where the code is actually going to get executed and you get the output on your desired environment. So if you look at this complete workflow process, where we start with the source code, directly you hand over your source code by triggering the interpreter by invoking uh, with the Python command. And once you and ensure that your code is given into the interpreter. The interpreter will set up a workflow process with the help of four major components. Component one is lexing, component two is parsing, and component three is compiling. And the compiler will generate a code called bytecode, which is another extension of file called .pyc. And then the bytecode is handed over to the interpreter, which is actually a virtual machine, who is very closer to your operating system and that virtual machine will generate a code called mission code. And the mission code is the final code that needs to get uh, executed in your mission and you obviously end up by getting the output of your program. If anything goes wrong in between, the interpreter will, uh, will throw an error and will get to know what's going wrong and we have to uh, tweak around with our codes and, and, and come up with a new clarity of code and then hand it over to the Python interpreter, again the same process will happen. So, to be more precise about these process like lexing, parsing, compilation, what technically happens that we have to see. So, let's move on to the next slide to understand the definition of all these components. So, we are going to discuss about the four major components, lexing, parsing, compiling and interpreting. So, the first process is all about the lexing. What the lexing does is, the lexer breaks your source code, the line of code that you have written, into a tokens. It generates a code called token code and this token which is generated out of your source code will be handed over to the parser. The parser will use that token to generate a tree syntax and that is called as an abstract syntax tree, AST. Now this AST in, in depicting the relationship between these tokens can be further offered to your compiler. Now before we hand it over to the compiler, as you can see, there's a diagrammatic representation which represents that how an, an abstract syntax tree would look like. You can actually see the complete diagram. This is the abstract syntax tree which got created out of the tokens that's been generated by the lexer. And the lexer generates the token with the help of the source code that you have already offered. So, lexer generates a token, parser receives the token and creates an abstract syntax tree which would look exactly like the diagram that's been depicted over there. And post the parsing is done, the tree is going to be handed over to the compiler. The compiler will turn this tree, the abstract syntax tree, into a code object. The code object is 
the object which is more relevant to your intermediate language code. And this intermediate language code, code, the intermediate language code is the exact code which is standing above your machine code. It's exactly one step earlier to your machine code. So this object code or the code object is going to be handed over to the interpreter. The interpreter will execute this code object and generate a machine code. And finally, your source code is actually getting executed and it generates the output for you based on the logic that you have written on your source code. So definition wise, you can see that technically Lexer creates a token, parser generates an abstract syntax tree, which is exactly the one that you're seeing on the diagram and then hand it over to the compiler. Compiler will do another round of conversion called code objects and the code objects is actually handed over to the interpreter and interpreter finally converts it to the machine code.